Hi, I'm here with Brian von Herzen from the Climate Foundation. Greetings. And we're going to discuss the biochar reactor. Yes, the Climate Foundation biochar reactor. How are you today? Okay, good, thanks. Thanks. Um, my first question is, what can you say about what's the most unique part of your project or your process? What's this, what really stands out? Well, the key aspects of the biochar process that we have at the, with the Climate Foundation biochar reactor is the ability to have a very self-sustaining system that is able to reuse the heat of our process and the, in fact, the electricity is produced by our process. So we have no need for external electricity, no need for water supply, and no need for sewage output. And what really makes our system unique is that the biochar we're produce, we are producing is actually used in the biochar filters for deodorizing that are present up in the top part of our system. As a result, uh, we're able to actually reuse the biochar and it's actually providing this deodorizing uh, aspect. In addition, we're using the heat of pyrolysis for use in our dryer system. As you know, the solid waste and the human solid waste is a very high moisture input material. And so one of the key aspects is getting the moisture low enough to be able to use effectively. In our drying system, we're actually able to convey the, um, the solid waste over the dryer and reduce the moisture content into the 30% range. And when it's at this 30% range, it can then be passed to the pyrolyzer, our catalytic converter, our heat engine, and ultimately to our condensing heat exchanger. Okay. So that in that, t one of the other key aspects I would say is that this heat exchanger is condensing 90% of the water vapor, and as a result, that heat of condensation is available to our process for drying. And this is recapture of latent heat of vaporization that really enables our system to have the efficiency that it needs for handling very high moisture content input material up to let's say 80% moisture. And uh, what have you? What have been your biggest achievements or success? This is so far with this process? Well, I would say being able to integrate at scale. This system, as it stands now, will handle up to 100 kilograms per hour, and we could operate a, even 20 hours per day. So ultimately, several tons of material per day could be processed through the system, providing sanitation needs for thousands of people each day. And, and the fact that it's transportable means it could be brought for a, an, an emergency situation or uh, to a large uh, uh, event or festival. But in addition, it could be deployed in a small city or other neighborhood environment and would give us a very good way to provide the uh, sanitation services in a modular transportable way. And what about frustrations or hurdles or barriers that is somehow stopping your process? What have you experienced? Well, we are making good progress. I would say one of the challenges is that of system integration. Uh, so the, from the system integration standpoint, we're integrating a drying system, a pyrolyzer, a catalytic converter, a heat exchanger, and a heat engine. And so getting all those systems running smoothly together is part of the engineering challenge. But we're engineers for, and we do engineering for a living, so this is what we do best. And how far are you in terms of technology readiness level? How many more years do you need before it can really go to scale? Well, actually this year we'll be demonstrating a TRL-7 system, which means a prototype system operating in a field environment with our partner Sanergy in Nairobi, Kenya. So they're already collecting several tons of waste per day, and we'll be able to take that waste in a neighborhood environment and convert it to biochar at scale. And so this system is very much designed to operate at scale, and we're expecting later this year to have this uh, demonstration at scale at our field location in Nairobi, Kenya. And have you had any collaborations with any of the other projects that are displayed here? Are there any um, components where you have the same approaches so we can collaborate? Yes, it's very complementary, not only with Sanergy, our partners in Africa, but also with EVAG, who have a, a beautiful uh, toilet system and sanitation unit, and also have the urine processing. We go with the uh, EVAG system, and we can provide the solid waste processing that is complementary to their urine processing. In fact, we can supply them with some heat and some uh, power and uh, uh, also some drying air, potentially, and these are all very useful in the urine processing system and they're highly complementary. In addition, the biochar filters that we have at the top of our container can be very useful for deodorizing after the drying process. And so from that perspective, we're highly complementary with systems like AVAX and in fact with the Sanergy collection system and we see that as a key opportunity going forward to provide a complete sanitation solution not only across Africa but also India and other lean nations.
In fact, I must say that we just received an award from the uh, NAFTA, North American Free Trade Association, for a grant to uh, adapt the system for application in Alaska. And so it turns out in Inuit villages, there's also no water system, no sewage collection system, and a real opportunity to use this kind of biochar reactor from the Climate Foundation to actually provide a, a complete waste disposal system in the Arctic, around Arctic North America and other parts of the world. Uh, and so from that perspective, we look forward to adapting this and partnering with uh, our key partners in Alaska and in Washington. Great. Thanks very much, Brian. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> okay.